first of all, uh, so everyone can see me and hear me right now, we're all good? Yep. Okay. Uh, just want to thank everybody, uh, yeah, Coach Charbonneau, for reaching out to me. And it's, it's great to see, you know, Coach Wiley. I've known Coach Wiley for a lot of years. I've always appreciated everything that he's, he's done as far as, uh, um, you know, O-line play. He's always been willing to help people out. And, and it's, it's really uh, it's really great to uh, just talk offensive line play. I've been doing it for years. Uh, kind of introduce myself a little bit. I'm a career NCAA coach. I coached in the NCAA for over 30 years. I'm really a West Coast guy, so to speak. Uh, I've, I've worked in the West Coast, uh, Washington State, for, for a number of years. Then I went down to Stanford uh, with Coach Willingham, went to Notre Dame uh, with Tyrone. And, and then we, uh, I went down to Purdue with uh, Joe Tiller and uh, worked at Bowling Green, Memphis. And, and my last college job was Tulane. And that's still where I live is in New Orleans. And I've, I've known the Campbell family for a long time. And uh, Rick Campbell gave me a call when he had an O-line job open up in the Ottawa Red Blacks uh, about four or five years ago. And uh, he, uh, he asked me if I was interested, came up and interviewed, talked a little football. And uh, next thing you know, I'm coaching the CFL. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. It's a great league. It's an unbelievable coaches up there. Uh, it, it's been great. And uh, I just hopefully we can get this pandemic uh, La the lasso around it, we can get back. I think we got some direction that uh, things are looking positive. So hopefully we can uh, all get going in the right direction. So uh, with that, I, I, I my, my uh, practice video and technique tapes, I really don't have, uh, have the, uh, I'm down in New Orleans, so I didn't have the ability to get those all out, but I put together a little bit of a PowerPoint and then I've got some film uh, that I from uh, some of my old cutups that uh, we're going to watch. I'm going to basically talk about uh, inside zone combinations. Uh, but before that, I just kind of wanted to go over a, f a few uh, things that I believe as far as what I think it takes to play in the offensive line standards that I'm looking for is number one is I want to have a guy that's competitive. Uh, you know, I, go, I want someone that wants to have the ability when it's a one-on-one -on -one block, you're competitive, you're going to do everything in your power to to uh, execute that block, get that block uh win that specific play. You have to be hardworking. You have to pay the price to uh, work in the offensive line. Uh, you have to, you know, not only in the practice field, off the practice field, the weight room, everything you have to do. I don't want guys that, that don't want to have to pay the price. The next thing that I think is really important, as you see down here, is you practice your plan and plan your practice. Uh, I talked about Tyrone Willingham a little bit earlier, and I stole this line from him. Uh, this was kind of one of his mantras. Always have a plan of action, what you're going to do. Believe in what you're going to do as far as offensive line plays. There's all sorts of ways to skin a cat. There's all sorts of ways to execute things, how you want to do those things. But believe in it, practice it, and then plan your practice. So when you do it, continue to do it over and over again. So I've always loved that line, practice your plan and plan your practice. Next thing I think is really important is finish everything that you do. Uh, you know, don't, don't stop anywhere in between, halfway uh, you know, once you start something, make sure you finish it. The, the game of football is four quarters. You got to play from the first quarter all the way to the end. You know, same thing with practice. You got to, when the whistle blows in practice, you're out there, you're ready to go, and, and you got to finish everything you do. Communicate. You know, in this day and age, uh, you know, communication is all over the, all over the planet. You text, uh, uh, you have Facebook, you have email, you know, phone call, you know, something that I think's uh, forgotten a little bit is face-to-face -face communication. I think that's really important in the game of football is still to do is, is be able to communicate, talk one-on-one -on -one with your players, look them in the eyeball, uh, get, get to understand them, get to know them, get to uh, know their strengths and weaknesses and their families and, and everything that you possibly can, because the more you know someone, the better you are you can be able to communicate. Okay. Awesome. Next thing I wanted to talk a little bit about is, is everyone got to the next PowerPoint. I want to talk a little bit about teaching. Okay. I, I think we all are teachers uh, as coaches. I, I, I started in 1982 and 83. I was a high school head high school football coach in the state of Montana. I taught history and I was a football coach and it was Scobie, Montana. And I want you all to take a look at a map of where Scobie, Montana is. If you find it, you, you're really, uh, you really have a good vision because it's, it's stuck out there, but it was really, really good. But I always believe that we're teaching. And there's some of these things that I like to say as far as teaching goes. I think in the classroom or in a meeting room, you have to uh, express it to your players. They have to hear it. So you have to enunciate. You have to prepare you. Whatever you're, you're talking about, they have to hear what you're teaching. 
They have to hear what you're saying and you have to be able to communicate that with them. Then I think you need to write it down. They need to see it. All right. You need to say it like we, we, we listened to Coach Wiley back in the days. You know, you had the chalkboard, then you had the grease board, then you had the overhead. Now we have these computers that have, that have all the blow ups and all these skills and all these these technological advantages that we have so that they can see it on the board. The next thing that I think you have to do is I still believe guys have to write it down. You still have to write things down and understand things. So in my meeting rooms, I want my linemen to take notes. I want them to do those types of things. Another thing that I like to do is I learn this right here. You can see this little three by five card that I have right here. I listened to Don James speak in 1984 at a clinic. And he said that in every single football game he did, he has a three by five card and he takes notes during the whole game. And that's something that I've done my whole life in coaching. I take notes during games, during practice, all the time. When it's a game time, I listen to the, the coordinator's call and I, I watch specific things on the defense and every single play, I write down a play. That was a good block by so-and-so. That was a bad block. That was the front they were in, all those types of things. So when they come off the field, I have them already written down. Hey, you know, Joe, what happened on that play right there? That was a good job on that play. And now the communication is flowing and we're all speaking the same language because I think you forget it in the heat of the battle. So I'm a big guy in writing things down all the time, taking notes, understanding things so that you know, you're know you able to communicate and be on top of everything. So halftime, how many times has the head coach or the coordinator come into it? What runs do you want? Bingo, I have them all written down, ready to go for them right there at halftime so that he knows, hey, I like this, this, and I don't like this and that. This is what they're doing to us on second and short. This is what they're doing us on third and medium. I have that all written down. I take those notes. And so I'm always, I try to be as prepared as I possibly can by writing things down. Coach Soros did, a, a, you talked about a little bit earlier. I'm a big uh, uh, walk and chalk guy. I like to, uh, I like to end meetings. You know, sometimes meetings can get stale. Uh, you, you guys are all coaches. You know, the drudgery of practices and all those kind of things and all the, all the, all the, uh, uh, paperwork that you have to do. I like to do it. And then I like to get them out into the practice field. And even in the, even in your meeting rooms, you can clear out the desks. I can get them up. You can get out there and you can walk and chalk. I think that's really, really critical. Uh, I love the Gilman mats, just like coach Sorrell's had. I get them out there. I already have them practice out. So we we meet for an hour. We'll walk out onto the field and, and we'll do some walk and chalk and I can do fronts. I can do stunts. I can do blitzes. I can do anything that we want to see as far as uh, what we can with the walk it. I, I really think that there's a lot of, you can get a lot of valuable time when you walk it, a lot of great teach time. Then, they, then you got to run it, that's practice. You got to run it, you got to run it, you got to execute it in practice at full speed, and then you got to rep it. I, I, I really think that that's very, very important. And those are all the teaching sequences that I want right there. I think you got to hear it, you got to see it, you got to write it, you got to walk it, you got to run it, you got to rep it. So that's what I always try to teach my guys. And, and, and to follow those, those scenarios. As a position coach, okay, I think you as a position coach, what you want to do is take your player to the next level. I think that's, that's really, really important, whether he's a freshman going to go to be a sophomore or a junior going to be a senior, uh, whether he's a first-year college player up to a senior player, either he's a rookie in the, in the CFL and whatever you want, you want to take that player to the next level. If, if, you're, if you take a kid and you're a high school coach and you have him as a, as a freshman, he should be a better player by the time he gets a senior. If he's a, if he's a backup player, you want to push him to be a starter. If he's a starter, you want to push him to be an all-conference player. That's what I'm getting out about is, is what I want you to do is take your player to the next level. The second thing I want to do as a position coach, I want to create confidence, confidence schematically. Okay, I want to show them what we're trying to do is schematically is going to allow us to be, beat the defenders, beat the defeat, beat the defense, and win the football game. I want to create co create confidence in our schemes. Show them on the board. Show them with with film and film study why schematically we are doing the things the best that we possibly can. With that, all right. Then I want to teach players techniques to breed confidence. All right. Uh, you know, Coach Costello talked about it earlier. He did a great job. You know, they're all built differently. Every, every single player has certain strengths and certain weakness, weaknesses. you got to build on those strengths and you got to correct and get those weaknesses better. And when you do that, you have to have the certain techniques that are going to breed confidence in your players so that when they go out in game time, they have all the answers. You know, uh, you, you know, once again, Coach Costello talked about the tool, the toolbox. You know, hey, there's all sorts of tools. There's all sorts of ways to get things done, to execute blocks, 
to do those types of things. That's what you have to teach them. So you have to have a good repertoire of what you want to do to bring confidence with certain techniques that you want to have. Next thing you want to do is you want to develop an edge. All right. And, and, and I think uh, once again, the guys before me, you guys are tough acts to follow. Um, but, it, you, you know, you, you said that you, you want to develop, develop an edge. What am I going to be able to do? The offensive line position is, is a learned position. It is a learned position. You have to work it, work it, work it, because it's not something that you do. When little kids start playing with, with whether it's a baseball, a basketball, or football, they're usually throwing it and catching it. They're certainly not blocking one another. And that's what I'm getting at. And I know Coach Costello talked about that a little bit. We got a very, very tough job because uh, offensive line play is, is a learned position. And with that, you have to tell them as the edge is something that is really, really hard to do. And we're going to do it, and we're going to do it to the best of our abilities, and we're going to get answers. The last thing I want to, want to talk about as a position coach is you always have to have answers. And, you know, Coach Wiley will probably remember back in the, you know, 70s and 80s, he used to have a shell oil, used to have the shell answer man. You know, and he would, he would uh, come on, they'd do, ask him questions, and he would come out and, you know, why was my car not running real well? And he would say, well, because this is this, I'm the shell answer man, I know how to fix it. I know how to do this. This is why it's not working. You got to do it and you got to correct this. That's us, guys. We always have to have the answers. You can't, you can't scrunch your shoulders. You don't want to scrunch your shoulders and say, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. You know, that, that doesn't work. That's, that's, that's bad coaching. You have to have an answer and it has to be the right answer. And it has to be an answer because of the stuff that you've done, because you've created confidence schematically, you've taught them techniques and you've developed an edge. Those are the answers that are going to get these things done. So that's what you always have to do. So, uh, you know, I talk to some of my guys, they say, you know, I'm the shell answer man. And they look at me like, who the, what the hell, you know, some old man, you know, you're talking about the shell answer man. Well, I'll explain it to them just like I did to you guys, that we always have to have answers. And I want you to come to me and I will give those answers to you to, to get us into the best positions. Okay. Uh, pop in if you have any questions at any time. Uh, hang on. I don't want that right there. Okay. Run blocking. Just, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about inside outside zone. So I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit, you know, just some of the fundamentals or, or just some of my little beliefs and sayings that I like to use even before we, we do any diagrams or, or, or talk about uh, uh, techniques or schemes. The first thing I always want to talk to when I, when I talk about run blocking uh, with the offensive line, and I'll put it just like it is base equals balance equals power. If you have no base, you have no balance, you have no power. Just think of it that it, 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 over and over again, okay? And, you know, Coach Soros talked about squat rack, and I'm the same way. When, when, you're, you, when you're a lineman or you're, or you're going in to do a squat and you walk up underneath the squat rack and you get up underneath the bar and you put it back over your back and down in your traps and you're holding it, where are your feet aligned? They certainly aren't tight together. Because just imagine doing a squat with your feet together as you're going down to get in the squat and you're trying to sit and get your feet to a 40, you know, your, your, your butt and your, your ass down into a 45 degree plane. You can't do it. Or you certainly can't have very much weight. Okay. You can't do that. Or ask as, as you get there and, and with your base, have them get on their toes and see how they can do a squat on top of their toes. You have no balance when you're on top of your toes. So where's, where's your base? If you go extra, extra wide with your base, just say your, your base is way outside your shoulders, outside your armpits, all that type of stuff. When you go down and you squat, you might be able to squat, but you certainly aren't going to have the optimum amount of weight that you want to be, become a powerful person. So that's why I'm always saying when you're a run blocker, what's your good base? I say get under the squat rack. Where are your feet when you get up underneath the squat rack? They're probably, you know, armpits straight down, maybe, maybe a little bit wider, maybe a little bit narrower, depending on what your body frame is. But that's kind of your, your toes are slightly maybe pointed outwards a little bit. Your feet are firmly entrenched in the ground. And then you can go down and then you go straight back up. And that's where your power comes from. And you're in good balance. All right. So I really think that's, that's uh, important that they always know base, balance, and power. All right. If you have no base, you really have no chance of having any balance. And without any balance, you don't have a chance to have any power because we all know the, the offensive line position is, is a powerful position. And we have to have all those things working in unison to get after it, to make sure that we execute our proper boss. I'm not gonna get too much into a stance 
uh, right here, but you know that's the fundamental of offensive line play, play is the attitude you have with your stance. Uh, you have to get up to the line of scrimmage. It's got to be the same every single solitary time, whether you're in a three-point stance or a two-point stance, uh, whatever it is, whatever your belief is, belief is, it has to always be the same. You have to get in your stance, and I, I'm a big believer in shoulder over the knee and the knee over the toe. Your knees are inside your your ankles, and and uh, and, and that that will always produce great great uh, position for you to execute your blocks. Takeoff. Okay, this this is this. How do how do we come off the football? Okay, well the the first thing I'm going to tell you is is as we come off the football, I want to take off with short, purposeful steps. Now that might sound pretty vague, all right, but I certainly don't want to overstride, all right. If you overstride on a takeoff, your heel's going to hit first into the ground, and then you're going to shoot everything backwards, all right. If you step backwards to go forward, you're going to be in a, a bad balance position. So your takeoff, you want to take the proper step that's going to put you in the optimum position to block the defender. All right. Uh, I, I use an approach step. I use a drop step. I, I use a stretch step. I use a pick up and put down step. I have all sorts of them. And the second step has to be another perfect step that's going to allow you to keep your base. And it has to be in the direction that you're going to go to make the optimum of block. So there's a lots of vagueness with that takeoff. But with film study and those types of things, you'll be able to get the perfect takeoff that you want every single time. I put contact and leverage uh, kind of together uh, because um, you know there, there's all sorts of angles that you want to contact. I mean, I, I have all sorts of aiming points. I have hip bone, I have crotch, I have body line, I have armpit, I have via the neck. All of those are your contact points. That's where you want to be initially have your eyes leading into your contact point so that you can strike and it's any specific play. Uh, I, I have a certain spot on almost every single play, whether it's a run game or a pass game, that I want your eye to have contact on that the specific spot that you want to block to. Leverage. I think I break it up into three different uh, uh, areas right there. Everybody, uh, you know, wants to, you know, the game of football is a leverage game. Uh, you know, pad under pad, face mask under face mask, all those are super terms. Uh, and, and they still hold true, but, uh, you know, I'll go back to a little bit earlier. All bodies are built differently. Sometimes you're not going to be able to always get, um, you know, face mask under face mask. Just you know, might have a taller player versus a shorter player. It's just not going to work. So I kind of go back to what Coach Cyril said. I, I agree with your hips. You know, I think that's a, that's a true indicator is where your hip alignment is. Lower hips a lot of times really execute how you can get the Face, the old face mask under face mask, the leverage. The other leverage, I, I believe it is hand leverage. We've talked about it, you know, everybody's talked about it, inside hands win. I really want to readjust my hands to get inside hands win, readjust, run pain, pass game, always readjust your hands, working to get tight hands, inside hands fit. Don't let the defender get his hands inside of your hands. Always work it. Always work to keep your inside hand leverage. I'm always talking about inside hand leverage. And then the third one is positional leverage. What, what, what position am I going to be in on any specific play that's going to put me at great leverage? And uh, I'll just go with your center block back. Whenever the center is going to block back, is, is where, is the, where is the optimum leverage point that you want to be? Uh, do you want your hat in front? Do you want your hat down in the middle? Do you want your hat high? All those type of things. You want to straddle them. All those types of things, those are positional leverages. Let's say you, you, you run a pin and pull skill and your tackle's blocking down on a three technique. What, what leverage do you want? Where do you want that? That's positional leverage. That you as a coach, is, you should figure out what you want to have is, is, is your specific leverage. That's what I mean when I say positional leverage. So I want, you know, optimum, you know, face mask under face mask leverage, hand leverage, and positional leverage are the three types of leverage I want you to have to try in every single football play. The next one down I have is power over position and position over power. And I was fortunate enough over my career to, to build a friendship with, with a great coach. Uh, uh, I know everyone in this room's heard of him and, and has talked uh, about him as Howard Mudd. And he taught me this years and years ago when he was with the Seattle Seahawks, even way before he was, when, with, he was with the Indianapolis uh, Colts. But he said, you know, on any specific football play, there are chances where you can be in a super powerful position. In other words, you can kind of lunge out 
and you can kind of get out over your toes and you can really, really kind of strike your defender with all your body force and your, your power and not be in great body position. And then you can rally your feet to get to back into being in good position. But that initial strike, that initial lunge, that's power over position. And then there's certain blocks in, 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 in the game. And I'm going to talk about them a little bit when I get to the film and uh, uh, where I really want to be, you know, a little bit more powerful uh, with our strike and, and with our attitude uh, than, than maybe a little bit more of a controlled uh, footwork that, that we might want to do. And then there's blocks that where we have to have position over power. So in other words, we want to get to a specific spot to a defender uh, by what I call a hip position walk or, or, or as Coach Wiley in the cool clinic, your duck demeanor, those types of things where you're kind of sizing up the defender and you're going to get yourself into a position where you're optimum block and then you turn that into power. So that's position over power. So you want to get up on top of the guy, thud him up, drive him, and then turn that into a powerful block. Howard Mudd uh, told me years and years ago, a titty block is better than no block. And, and, and you know, so that you can get up on top of those linebackers and you can get up on them, strike them and drive your knees and, and get after them. The next one down is, is a foot acceleration and knee drive. And, and I, I say it the same because I talked about short purposeful steps and, and we really want to accelerate our feet. But I think that incorporates with something that I learned and I like to say is what I call knee drive. You want to drive your knees as well as your feet. Uh, and explode through that. Uh, another great friend of mine uh, uh, over the years, uh, unfortunately, is, is not with us anymore, but is but a great friend. I grew up with him, was a, was a guy named George Yarno. And I, and I really learned this from him. And he was kind of an undersized uh, pro lineman. He played 14 years in the NFL, but he really felt that your foot acceleration wasn't enough. It was your knee drive, too, that, 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 uh, uh, got you through things. And he played with Mike Munchak down for the Houston Oilers. And that's who he learned it from was the knee drive. And I stole it from him. And I, I, uh, I, I, I still use it today. And, and uh, you know, well, Coach Wiley, when you get to Ottawa, all the linemen used to laugh when he used to drive those knees. And, and uh, <laughs> they thought that was a, a pretty, uh, pretty good statement. And lastly, you want to finish. I want to try to finish every run blocking play in a dominant position. Uh, as, as much as you can when all the other coaches have talked about that, at, you know, tonight too, and I'm no different. I want to finish everything you want to do, play with great effort, play with great intensity, play with great fight, play with great determination, every single snap. Uh, you know, don't sell yourself short. Don't sell yourself short. It's, it's very, very important to finish everything that you do. Okay. Next thing up is I just kind of want to show you, you know, everyone's got this diagram in your playbook, you know, the, the uh, you know, four eyes and the two eyes, the twos, the zeros, the six, the nine, the six eyes, the fives, all that kind of stuff. But I want you to look at the, the far left corner where it says own your gap. Okay, right there. And, and that's all I'm really going to talk about right here is every single football play. I want you to strive to own your gap. Can everybody see that? Can okay, everyone see that in the corner where it says own your gap? And what yeah, I mean yeah. by that, what I mean by that is defensively, I don't care what defense you put up there, one of those defenders is going to try to come to your gap eventually. And you've got to own that gap. You've got to defeat the defender in that gap. What so if I'm a right guard and I got a three technique and I step to my right gap and that three technique rocks out to uh, his left, I got to block that guy in that gap. I can't let him go. I can't, you know, I got to get him. I got to block his ass. So if you don't know what you're doing, you, you got to know you own your gap when you play for Coach Mack. You got to own that sucking gap every single play. If I'm a center and I got a shade and I know I'm not getting any help, I got to own that gap. I got to block that son of a bitch. That's my job and that's what I'm going to do. I got to own it. I don't want to, I don't want to hear the nonsense that, you know, it's a tough block and all that kind of stuff. It's all got to be tough blocks. There's going to, everyone's going to have to play, do it, but you're going to have to find a way to get that done. And you got to own your own gap. So I think that's really, really important. Uh, and I try to stress into my guys, particularly in the run game, is it gets you guys, you got to own your gap, okay? So the, the, the main brunt of our talk tonight in, is, is what I wanted to talk about is, is inside run game terminology, uh, run games, uh, zone combinations for inside zone, uh, and, and what, what to the to the number side or, or, or to the point linebacker or to the call side, we use single we use single, double, and triple. Uh, 
all right? The single block is a front side uh, controlled zone block on uh, D lineman to play side second level defender. And, and much like, uh, you know, Coach Sorrell says, we, we kind of go in a 50-50 a or a, a 75-25 mentality as, as uh, we get right there and execute at the block between the center and the right guard as we're looking at this pitcher on a single, okay? And so we'll just start with my right guard right here. He's going to want to take what I call an over and, over and up step with his right foot, okay? And he's going to protect his gap. And he's going to read that, that uh, three technique, whatever he's going to do. And he wants to get a bite on him. And we want to double team him as much as we possibly can. We want to double team level one into level two. So I don't want anyone in a hurry to climb it up to the second level in these. I want them staying firm and solid on the down defensive lineman. Uh, I'm a firm believer that if the plays run right and the running backs are doing everything correctly, the linebackers will come to us. We don't have to go chase linebackers on inside zone. So we want to block that man. So if that defender just plays heavy into that gap, uh, that, that uh, right guard, depending where he's going to be, he's going to block half a man. It's, I, I like the Crowder sled lift technique. Get his, get his uh, firm foot in the ground. I call him a high knee. I want to drive that high knee through that three techniques crotch and lift him and lift his shoulders up, knowing that I, help, I have help underneath. So I call it a lead block and an underneath block. So my right guard in this, this instance is the lead blocker and my center is the underneath blocker, All right? So basically uh, uh, it's a post, uh, just like Coach Sorrell says, we're kind of posting up that three technique and for that right guard. And I know that I have help coming from my, my center underneath. My center now, I take what I got a drop open step and I want to aim right at the near hip bone with my eyes. So uh, any type of inside slant, I want my center to be ready for uh, you know, a mouthful of helmet. And I, the thing I don't want to have happen is have that offensive guard let that guy just down into my center. I want to treat that into a double team. So I want to stay vertical with that push. I don't want to avoid that three technique. I want to go through that half a man and then double team that man. And I want to drive him up into that linebacker. All right. So hey, John, I, John, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but, but does that change? Does that change on the cost of the back? So say the back was running to the inside leg of the tackle as opposed to running to the inside leg of the guard. Would that approach change for the guard? We would go looser, uh, Bob. We would, we would take a lift. We're, we, got out, we got inside zone. We got mid zone. And that would be what we would call more of a mid zone. And now my aiming points. So my aiming point for the guard right here is, is, the, is the outside tit. You understand what I'm saying for my guard? If it was a little bit wider, my aiming point is either going to be what I would call the armpit uh, by my right guard or the body line of that, that defender. You understand I me? Mean, the outside body line of that guy. And I would take a little bit of a looser footwork step right there. Either a yeah, I was stretch. Talking, I was talking more about the center going over. You know what I mean? Sure. Because the entry point in the back would be A gap to A gap on one. And the yes. entry point in the back would be. So he's pushing the B gap. So now the linebacker is going to react differently. Right, right. But we're, we're, we're just going to keep that. But, you know, with game, game to game, we could adjust right there uh, with that. But uh, I uh, front side, I always aim to the near hip bone with my center. Okay, reacting to what that, that guy is going to be. And I feel with the flow of the back that that's going to allow the, the linebacker to have, have a hard time adjusting and reading what the what we're trying to do right there. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I was. Does that, does that make sense though? Okay. Um, so so with that, that's that's what we have right there with with my center and my guard right here. And then initially I want to get on top of that um, three technique and drive them up into the mic. Okay. If we go down to the double, uh, it's going to be between the tackle in, in the play side guard. And basically your techniques are going to be the exact same where your tackle is the lead player and the, and the right guard is your underneath player. And we're going to work up to that defensive uh, rush to the mic. And then the triple would be between the tackle and the tight end out to the rush uh, to the outside defender. And we'll go from there. Okay. Great questions. Please, please um, pop up anytime. Okay. Backside we have uh we go, we go letters. We have a backside A, B, and C. All right. So the A block will be between the center and the uh, backside guard to the nose to a stack backer. 
once again, the footwork here is, is not quite as uh, tight. It's a little bit looser. Our aiming points uh, more of the center would be aiming more a little bit more towards the armpit of that nose guard and the uh, backside guard is going to aim what I would like to say towards the crotch of the nose guard and we want to get a good push on the on the nose guard up into that backer. A B combination is is a uh, backside combination with the backside tackle and in, in the uh, guard to the nose guard to the stack backer and a C would be the backside uh, tight end and uh, tackle. One last thing I want to go over and then I just want you to look down here where it says super and highway. All right. Super is a three man combination front side uh, tackle guard and center when we're seeing a lot of uh, movement uh, from the defense and it's going to be a three man combination. Uh, and it's kind of like Coach Sorrells. This is a time where if we can, you know, work this into a double or a single front side, that's ideally what we want to do. I still want to try to get a double team somewhere in that scenario uh, if we can. I would rather not that be three specific single blocks. And a highway, once again, is any kind of your bare front, your three-man surface front, uh, those types of things. And uh, we'll work for the center of the backside guard and the front side guard to work that stack inside. Does that sound good to everybody? How are we doing, Coach uh, Charbonneau? Are we doing good? Perfect. Yep. Love it. Okay. Let's let's get to a little film. Is everyone good for some film? Absolutely. Got it. All right. All eyes on the center and the and the left guard right here. They're singling up onto the the um, you know the 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 shade right here to the number forty nine, the linebacker. Just as we get right here. Okay. We'll start with the left. Guard, I love his first step, just a drop step, open step right here. I think he's trying to Crowder sled the defender right there. Number four is doing a great job of driving and lifting. And then right here, he's posting up. We got the underneath player coming, doing a great job of driving, getting a good body. And this is, this is where I want to be very powerful. I want to have to come with great power on the underneath blocker. And this is another thing right here. This is a, you know, one of the things I talked about earlier. This is where you drive your knees. This, this is really, really a, a good job right here of the center uh, driving his knees. And I think it's great patience by my left guard right here of not coming off the double team, staying on the down double team, wait until the linebacker comes to him and then he thuds him and then he executes his block just like this. Now, uh, we're not talking about, uh, I wasn't, you know, but this Coach Wiley, this is, this is where I was with the running back. I feel he predetermines way too much here. You with me? He should press, in my opinion, he should just press right up in here in that vacuum behind the center and the left guard. He cuts back way too soon, okay? Um, so so that, you, never that's hit, you never get to the linebacker and then they're yelling at the line for not blocking the linebacker. <laughs> well, I'm, you, like I said, I, I mean, I'm just – I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm just, I thought this was a real good job of, a, of a, what I would consider a good single for everybody to watch. And, and the running back just, you know, and this is a great young man too. And he just, just, he makes mistakes too, but I sure as heck would like to see him. And that's kind of what I was getting about earlier with you is the, the way that the running back should go right here should, should even make it harder on number 49 is what I was getting at. Does that make sense to you, Bob? so. OK, let's take a look at the backside B right here. I like my my uh, right guards. First step is good. He can be a I'd, I'd like him to be a little bit stronger with with what I call my Crowder sled lift. But it's it's good enough. It, it, it's good enough. Now that the only problem I don't like right here with my backside uh, right tackle is I don't like his first step. He steps up underneath himself and that puts him at too much of a forward lean. And, and the timing isn't correct here uh, with my, with my uh, right guard. Okay, here we go. We, we got a few things I wanna watch on this specific play right here is your first eyes should look at the right tackle and the right tight end. This is a triple, okay? So what we're doing right here is a triple block. All right, so now the six eye right here, he's, he's gonna rock outside to a nine. This is kind of what I'm talking about. My tight end should know that he's got to own that gap. He's got to own that gap when that six eye rocks out there and he's got to execute that block and drive him. All right. I think this is good job on my right tackle right here, getting hip to hip with my tight end. All of a sudden the six technique uh, rocks out on him, but he still stays on his course 
And this is what I call a hip position walk up onto this linebacker, just like that. Now, once again, he doesn't have great leverage because he's a much taller player than this linebacker, but what he does have is great hand leverage. He's got great inside hand leverage, and that's executing the block, which I think is very, very good here as he comes up to the second level right here. I think it's really important to what I like to do is thud the linebackers. The term you like to hear me say is I want to thud them. I want to thud them and get on them. If, they're, if I got a good thud in the linebacker, he's in trouble. And that's really what I want to do right here is get a good thud. All right. In here now, what we have between the inside three is a highway. All right. And let's all eyes right here on the right guard. I really like his footwork. I really like his footwork. I think that's good footwork right there. One, two, one, two. He's playing with good base right here. And he's kind of getting a little bit of a muddy read right here. Uh, the guy's kind of playing head up to inside shade. And I think he's anticipating the center there to help. Uh, I wish my center had a little better vision with his right eye onto that guy. And I think we could have turned this into a single. If, if that would have uh, uh, talked about right there and we could have got a little bit better block right there uh, inside and it's, it's not quite as, as, as soft as I, as I really like it. Now, the next thing I do want to do is, is this is what I consider good finish by my right guard. Here, right here, this is good finish. He's finishing in a dominant position. Okay, once again, all eyes right here, we're, we're working it. Uh, inside single block uh, between the center and the right guard to a three technique. Three technique kind of just stays in the, in the gap right here. Okay. And, and here we're going right here is, is my right guard is doing a great job of working right here. Once again, just all eyes on the right guard. He's stepping into that gap. He knows he has help from underneath from my center. I love his inside hands and his finish and his drive right there. And he's driving his knees. Uh, I think that's a great job. Now, tech, deck, I'm really not, uh, I, Alex is, is, at times we will gallop into this with my centers. At times, this would be a game adjustment, but this particular game was not one. I would prefer not to gallop in this play. It does have its place, uh, but I don't think he has to gallop into here. I think he can still take a drop open step and attack the near hip bone and number seven and do everything that he's going to be. What happens right here is he gets off the double team too soon, and now he dances with the linebacker in space. And I don't want to dance with the linebacker in space because I think we're going to get out athleted. I'd like that. I like by the running back coming right at us, the 49 to come into us a little bit tighter, and we can end up having a little bit better block right there. Okay, here we are again. We, we got all sorts of singles and, and, and uh, B blocks uh, I want to talk about right here. Okay, here, once again, here we are right here. Single block between my right guard and center. Really good. That's the kind of step I want right there by my center. Drop open in an angle, put me on the course right there. Aiming points just like that. I think this is really a nice job of my right guard of what I would call a high knee on 95. He does, he's still going through 95. He's not going around 95. He's going through them. That's just what I want right there. So we can get great push right there on the down guy, driving him, moving him, creating a soft spot for the running back and uh, getting good positive play right there. Okay. Got a bunch of these on tape right here. Want to get through to them because I got some. I got some doubles up here too that I want to want to show you. But uh, what we have right here now is is going to the left. We got a single block coming over here to the left with with my my center and my left guard. Now we get a longer stick. K sixty sevens in a heads alignment, and he's he's going right to my center. And this is what I call my center. Be expecting a mouthful of helmet. You got a big strong dude coming right down the middle of you. You got to be anticipating this, but I really do like what my my left guard's doing right here. Uh, Coach Sorrell's talked about it earlier, right there. I call that a one arm bench, just like he did right there. He's not getting a super strong pop on the guy, but he one arm benches just annuls that guy, pushes that guy onto my center, and drives him, and then he holds space long enough 
just to allow that space. And now number four is coming up to him and he can thud up onto that linebacker, get his hips and hands up underneath that man, drive him and work him. And now we've got a good positive play. Now let's take a look back at the backside B, okay? What I like right here is, is I like uh, Nolan's good first step. His second step is a crossover step. I'd like that to be a little bit more of a high knee. I want that high knee to go through 95. But look what it does to 95 shoulder pads. To me, that's optimum. When we can turn that shoulder pads like that, like 95s like that, that's great for my B block on the backside, just like that, okay? And now Nolan's coming up right here from a man. Uh, occupying number 45, shooting his hands into the harm pits. He can finish and sustain that block a little bit better. Okay, once again, here we go. Same thing, single block. I thought this was another good one right here of, of what I'm talking about, owning your gaps. And we'll just stop from the left with the left tackle and the left tight end. Those guys are coming into their gaps. That's my gap responsibility. I got to block that son of a bitch. He's my guy. I own it. I'm not getting a double team. I'm not getting any help right there. I'm going to win that gap. Now let's go to the single block back down here between my center and my uh, left guard right there. That's good strike. That's good strike and lift. This is a big, strong dude right here, 67. He's a big, strong man in the middle right here. I like our pad level. There's, a, there's an instance right there where our hips are up underneath 67's hips of both guys. Uh, my center's coming off with good force. I like his attack tempo and attitude right here. We get a break right here where number four likes to go to the back, back door right here. We get good eyes on the backside run through right here. We get a good finish by my, my left guard and we have a great, great play. Now, with this all being said, my backside right tackle is a dumbass. Okay, excuse my language. He should be B combination through the backside B gap. He's making a C call. And my guard is believing that he has a help on the B. And we're very fortunate, very fortunate. You've heard it all, all around. Everybody's got to do your job. We're very fortunate to this play uh, because everyone didn't execute your assignment. But, but from the front side all the way back to the right tackles, a, a lot of good stuff on that play. Keep watching here, we got, okay, here we've got highway in the middle, highway in the middle, okay, highway in the middle right here, okay, right here, this, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is not good right here by, by my, my left guard. He's getting defeated at the point of attack. He's getting pushed back. Now he's forcing the back to make a cut in the backfield. I don't want that, all right? Now, that's another topic. We can talk about true inside zone play, uh, what I want specifically with that, but that's, I want to put that in there where we don't want to see this. And it's really a second step, guys. It's his second step. His first step is good, but then he has no base has no balance and he has no power but the real real positive on this play that I do want to talk about is my, is my center does a good job of reading uh, 45 and my and we talked about it I think this is an excellent job of my backside uh, right guard right here all of a sudden there's no one in his gap and this is what I call falling back into a B fall back into a B combination all right so in other words don't chase air there's nothing there. There's trying to, somebody's trying to cross face and get into your specific gap. So he takes a good first step. His second step's a little, little too much of a crossover, but it does climb over the pipe. I do like how it climbs over the pipe right there. And he does fight back into 95. And now we do end up turning it into a B combination on the backside. And he ends up getting a block on number four and he finishes with a dominant play. But that's really good stuff. Uh, by, by my guard, all right? This is another one I wanted to show right here. Um, this is one of my favorite B combinations, okay? This is one of my favorite B combinations on the backside between my, my left tackle and my left guard, all right? Really good step. First step by 64 right here, I like it. Okay, my second step, look at his base. Look at his base right there. Look at his high knee. He doesn't let that outside knee collapse. He keeps that left knee strong. He's driving, he's crowler sledding that defender. And this is, I put this in here because this I talked about a little bit. This is a power over position, all right? My, my, my left tackle's coming down here with a lot of power. He's coming down with a lot of power. His shoulder pads are a little bit out over his toes, all right? Uh, he's probably out of position a little bit, but he gets a good strike on him. 
the lead blocker posts him up right here. My underneath blocker can bring a lot of hat. And then he steps, strikes, and drives. He arches his lower back, and he drives his knees, and we get great push. Uh, once again, if we had to do this play over, this should have been a give to the running back, and it's a walk-in by 25 right there. Uh, that's what I'd like to see. But our single block is excellent right here. This is a great clip right here. I think we're removing the line of scrimmage. We're taking it to them. We're playing with an attitude. We're playing with fight. We're playing with finish. Everyone's on the same page. Those two combinations right there are hip to hip, shoulder to shoulder, striking, driving our feet and knees and, and pushing the guys off the ball. Okay, here's a double. All eyes right here on the left side. We've got a, 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 a three, three stack defense like here. We got a four eye over my left tackle right here. So now this is a double combination between my, my left tackle and my left guard. All right, let's take a look at what I like my left guards doing right here is I think it's, even though this guy's rocking right here, he could get a little bit more Crowther lift right there on 98 and lift him a little bit, but he does have a good body presence right here and he stops the penetration of 98 initially. All right. And right there. Okay. Then he climbs up to the second level. He's got good hit position walk on 21. He stalks him, he drives him, and now he drives the guy and rides him out of the play. Let's talk. Let's take a look at the left guard right here. All right. The left guard could step a little bit more at an angle right here at number 98. Uh, his pad level is a little bit too tall. He's absorbing the block a little bit, but I do like his fight and I do like his finish. And I do like how he's trying to work to get his hands inside. All right. But his pad level is too, too tall and he's got to try to get it up underneath. Okay. Let's take a look backside a block right here between my center and my uh, uh, left guard, or excuse me, my right guard, my center and my right guard right here. Really, really good. Once again, we saw it a little bit earlier. Uh, I like my center lifting right here, turning the shoulders of number 90 right here and lifting him off the ball. That is really good, powerful play right there. Crowther sled lift, strike and drive and lift right there. Stay on the double team. Number 22 decides to go into the back door. There's no need for him to come off uh, anywhere because he's not flowing over the top. He can just stay on the double team as long as he wants. Uh, backside guard ends up executing and taking over the block on the backside. Pretty good, though. Pretty good, pretty well blocked play right there. How am I doing, Paul? Coach Charbonneau, how am I doing? Very good. Uh, One more? Five minutes? Yeah, I just got a, I just got a, here's, I just got a couple more doubles in, 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 in whatever you want. Okay, here we are right here. Another kind of a, a three two alignment right here. Uh, a lot of the CFL people, this is, uh, uh, Willie Jefferson, a very good, very slippery, very, very good football player in the CFL. Uh, he's playing defensive end, and we know that he loves to move, move around a little bit. He's extremely athletic. So we always wanted to try to double team him and get him at the point of attack. So we got a double team right here between the left tackle and, and my uh, left guard right here. Really pretty good job here by my left tackle, seeing what, seeing what he's doing, having patience on number seven as he's trying to penetrate our inside gap. Staying strong, driving him, lifting him, having his eyes on number 31. Number 31 goes to the back door. There's really no reason for him to come off. Just stay on the double team. Let the defender run himself out of the play. My guard now, what I do like is I do like his initial first step, okay? I don't like his flailing arms. He can uh, tighten up his hands. And I don't like his hat placement down the middle with tip in his head. But see how he readjusts everything is what I do like. He readjusts his hats. He works to get inside hands. And uh, we get good push right there. And off we go. And we get a good result. OK, a few more here. Let's go to the next one. Okay, here's another single block right here between my, my center and my left guard, okay? What, I, I really like my center driving his knees right here and, and do this. I do like the lead blocker lifting and posting, but my lead blocker right here, look how long he's blocking the defender with one foot in the ground. He should be jamming his whole foot into the ground. See his right foot 
that we're, we're very fortunate right there uh, that, that he, he keeps that foot dangling in the air too long, okay? He needs to, needs to keep that going, but we end up getting a good block right here, good single block on the down guy, driving up to the next level in, in the running backs off to the races. Okay, this is, this, is the, this is the last one that I just wanted to put in here. And this was a, a little bit of a TT game uh, that we had in the middle here. And we can just kind of talk through it. Um, okay, we, it turns out into a single. And, and we, get, we get line movement between the, the, the two inside guys right here. What I want, I don't want 66 to chase and follow the guy that's going inside. I want him to push and shove and then climb to the next level just like he does right there. Uh, I think you talked about this, you know, double hand shove, like you, you talked about there a little bit, Coach Sheryls, with, with, with your blocks right here. It's kind of what the same kind of idea that I'm trying to get to that guy. He's trying to help us. If he's going to move away from him, just shove him out and climb to the seven, second level, propel yourself up there. My center kind of overshoots it a little bit. But what he does do is as that guy comes back, the guy that's penetrating on the backside, he turns and creates a hole right there. And now this, they're coming off, and it's an easy walk in onto the goal. So uh, ended up being some good things when they're trying to TT game us in the middle right there. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, you know, that's kind of kind of where I was at. I, I don't have any uh, you know, practice cut up. So uh, you know, next time I'd love to do it again. I can can go over drills, um, any other kind of fundamental things. But I just kind of want to talk a little bit of philosophy teaching and uh, those types of things and, and just kind of wanted to go over some of the, the game tape of inside combination blocks on our inside zone play. And then the next time I can put it all together if you'd like and we can talk about what I, what I expect the running back and aiming points and, and all those types of things. So uh, once again, thank you. This, this has been a blast all night. Uh, really, really enjoy talking to you and, and hopefully you guys got something out of it because uh, I sure know I'm getting something out of it tonight. So with that, open up any questions.